Good evening and welcome to Greater Somerville for October, oh, excuse me, September 30th, 2014. I'm Kyanne Anderson. Tonight's topic, Somerville Local First and Stimulating the Local Economy. How this one group has helped to create a movement to keep Somerville's independent business scene alive, quirky, and strong. As fierce advocates for shop local movement, our guests tonight are no strangers to this topic. Representing the Somerville Local First Organization, they are here tonight to talk about their mission, why they are motivated to do what they do, and why you need to be at Harvest Fest 2014 on Saturday, October 18th. So please join me in welcoming for her debut and his return appearance here on Greater Somerville, Kat Rutkin and Joe Grafton to the show. Welcome to the show. Hi, Kayan. Hi. Hi, how are you? Great. Thank you for coming out on such a dreary, it's just really gross outside. You know, I'm kind of, I'm laughing because I'm like, it's one of those things where I'm like, oh yeah, come down Union Square, it's so lively, it's, and it's just kind of like, eh. It's nice, it's but Irish you, out. <laughs> it is Irish out. That's a good way to think about it. Yeah, but it's a very wonderful uh -huh. way to think about it. Um, so here we are at the Scout TV set. Harvest Fest is upon us, and we'll get to that in a little bit, because um, that, that's a very important point for everybody to know about. Um, so let's talk maybe a little bit about the organization, um, because it's interesting to have the, the founding, you know, executive director here, as well as the current executive director, which is fantastic. Um, so it was founded, Joe, you founded it in 2008? Yeah, like 07, 08, we, we did a slow build and then officially launched in 09, May of 09. So, okay. like, I, I was working on it in 07, 08, but we sort of count our birthday, May Day 2009. Your birthday is May Day. Okay, mm -hmm. very nice. Mm -hmm. And, Kat, now you joined the team, or you joined in 2012. Yes. Okay. So, you're relatively new. Yes. You're showing the rest. But now Joe's on the board. Yes. So, that's helpful. Because a lot of people, it's funny, we were just here. And uh, Wendy Bloom, the executive director of SCAT, she was like, oh my gosh, Joe, she didn't expect to see you. And I think what it's interesting, because you have been year after year out and about going to all the wonderful places in Somerville. Now, Kat, that's on you. Um, but it's you know great to have you back. You went away, and now you're back. Yeah, I was in Western Mass for a little bit. Yeah. I tried living in the country and uh, yeah. made my way back to the city where I belong. Yeah. But now, I don't want to razz you. But, but I will. By all means, Razzie's was because it's your third time on the show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you live in Cambridge, right? I actually live in JP. Uh, okay. I know. I think but I'm going to take my I, microphone I, off. This I, is over. I'm done. I am a community member of Somerville Local First. So you I are. do pay my dues. So. Okay, yeah. and you're on the board. You have paid your dues. You get a free pass. Yeah. And now, are you? Do you live locally? I do. I live in Somerville. Okay. Good. Yes. See. Yeah. Well, that's why she's the director. Yeah. No. 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 Kick him out. Put you in. No, I'm just kidding. So now. What made you take this position? Well, it ended up just being very good timing. So mm -hmm. um, I have a background in urban planning and economic development. And when I lived in Brooklyn until about almost four years ago, I was running a business improvement district really? in Brooklyn. So, and also just am a huge fan of small business. I'm the granddaughter of small business owners. And um, Joe was moving on just about when I was ready to go back into the workforce. I was home for a year with my son and then was looking for um, a position. It was a great fit. And yeah. And here you are. So you're from New York originally? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. okay. But we live here now. <laughs> You live here now. That's important. Where are you from, Joe? I grew up in Pie Park, so I'm a Boston guy. Oh, originally. see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. You get right. some cred, some street cred. So now. All the street cred. You, all the street cred. <laughs> so now you're on the board. Now you are on, and I'm being selfish here, but I can because it's my show. Um, the CAC committee, yeah. the Citizens Advisor Committee, for those of you who don't know, uh, Union Square is about to embark on a huge huge amount of development and in fact um, they recently the the Somerville Redevelopment Authority just selected a master developer um, US2 who will be looking over the mass the overall development of a, a, an amazing amount of land and so the CAC which you are a member of gave the SRA a recommendation as to who they felt was the best developer or who the the city represented the community etc so that process now you're still overseeing now that the uh, city has selected someone you're still overseeing what are you overseeing exactly well we are now working to we're working with the master developer and working and developing the process so the cac is still sort of hammering out its role mm -hmm. and figuring out where we're going but also meeting with us2 and talking about each of the interests that all of us bring to the table 
Okay. So we've met with them to talk about the interest of the local business community, and I've actually found them to be really wonderful and receptive. Okay. And pretty interested in what we have to say. Interesting. So we might talk a, a little bit about them later in the show, just because I have a couple of questions for that and how it's going to impact Union Square and likewise the local businesses. But let's talk a little bit about Somerville Local First in terms of your mission. Mission of engaging business and community leaders in building ec economies that are green, local, and fair. We actually have an updated mission statement. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Hot so, off the press on Greater uh, Somerville. So we, we, we did this, and then Kat and I were like, all right, so, so I should probably know what this is. So let's see how I do, right? Okay. So um, uh, our mission is to uh, uh, create uh, a, a community where the independent local economy thrives, uh, and we, e we do that by educating and engaging community members, um, localizing purchasing power, and strengthening entrepreneurship. That's wow. what we do. Okay, so that's going to be on the website soon then. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just took this from the website. Yeah, I'm be we're, a little, for we're you. a little behind. I did my research. Yeah, oh, that's but, okay. But hey, you got the scoop. Yeah, you're, well, you're, hey, you heard it here first, first you're, here, you're folks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> talk to me about shift your shopping, move your mind. I mean, it's all kind of connected, right? But I mean, those are things mm -hmm. that you initiated in terms of trying to get people, um, which I have to say, I've been in Somerville for about 13 years. Wow, that's a long time. But um, <laughs> it really has changed, I think, in the last, say, five, six, where it's just this, again, I mean, you can t elaborate a little bit on the, the shift your shopping and the, the excuse me, the um, shift your shopping and the 10% shift. Just a little bit goes a long way in a localized economy. Now, why is that? Well, I guess I would say, you know, the reason why we've over, you know, our history sort of had these varying sort of types of campaigns is, you know, the, the message can get stale. Any message can get stale if you don't mm -hmm. have billions of dollars in marketing behind it, right? So. We've got to find a way to, to do effective grassroots marketing and messaging and education. Um, shift your shopping is about holiday shopping, right? So that's about, you know, like a particular time of year when people are focused on gift buying. Uh, move your money is about where you keep your financial institution relationships and where you're doing your financing and your banking. And so that's a piece of it. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think ultimately the organization and the campaigns and the programs and the, the directories and the guides and the coupon books and everything else that we've done have been about trying to create a cultural shift in Somerville mm -hmm. and trying to move sort of the needle of public understanding and and you know sort of where the public stands uh, on these things and you know I would say probably uh, one of my greatest sources of pride in the organization is reading report backs from local newspapers about community members who are in community meetings who are talking about economic development in a way where they're carrying forward our message yeah. but have no direct relationship with us. And I see that all the time. And mm -hmm. you know, I mean, to me, I, that, that feels like we've kind of moved the needle, you know, and uh, obviously it's not a black and white issue and, you know, there's not a right or wrong in every situation, but mm -hmm. it does feel to me like the community has really taken on those values and made them known. So now, Kat, what about the membership drive? Like you mentioned, these people that have, um, you know, been sending your message without even being connected to some of the local firms necessarily. But the members that you do have, like, what type of memberships do you have? Do you have? Is it businesses, or can anyone join? Do you have to be a Somerville resident? Can you, you know, have someone sponsor you? I know that sounds foolish, but you know, what if someone wants to get involved? How can they do that? Well, we do have business memberships, and those are open only to locally owned independent businesses. And then we also have a community membership. Like Joe said, he's a community member, um, doesn't live in Somerville. So if you just want to be a supporter, that's a really great way to join. And that's pretty much a make your own membership level. So, so the community membership, excuse me, the business memberships, now what is that? Is that like a certain percentage of, or just a certain flat fee? And then you get, is every year they pay that? So, I mean, you, yeah. you're getting supported financially from those business memberships. Yeah, it's a small fee. It's about $10 a month for our oh, businesses. Really? So, yeah. Wow. It's a great value. It is a great value. Well, so they get, now tell us a little bit. So the $10, they get to be involved in this we, organization. Yeah, and we, so we have some technical assistance seminars that we do. We did two this year, one on business financing and just different ways to think about financing your business. Um, we did another one on how to blog for business. 
with um, Dennis Fishman, and we also and Dennis Fishman. Sorry, I should communicate consulting. Yeah, okay. We do sort of just try to get that little. He specializes yeah. in nonprofit mm -hmm. consulting, um, and also we're having one coming up in November about sort of it's a food business panel. So we have someone who has a certified home kitchen, Jeremy Spindler. He's going to be talking about how you can get a certified home kitchen, which I don't know if a lot of people really. Know about. And this is when. It's in November. We don't have a date yet. Okay, but, but that will be on the website. We'll have all the yeah. information on our blog. And it will likely be at the new Aeronaut Space as well. The so. Aeronaut Space, Aeronaut yeah. Brewery. Like so, those guys. Love those guys. It's great. <laughs> well, I mean, that's really been um, what's been so interesting. Like, as you're saying, the shifting and, and seeing the, the cultural shift in Somerville, there, there really has been this innovative kitchen, like Kitchen Zinc is a fantastic concept, right? And, and with that, it's come. there's been so many interesting businesses that have come out of that, um, that now it's like, so in November, people who may be at home that may be like on the cusp, because I think Kitchen Zinc, you have to like sign up on a waiting list. I mean, it's an incredibly long waiting yeah. list, yeah. which is great because it's popular, but it, mm -hmm. you know, it speaks that you know, some of these people might have to be able to, if they go to your seminar, they'll be able to understand these things. And one other thing too, you've got a coupon book. I love this coupon book. And it comes out like when do you? I mean, how? You mean the locals' guide to Somerville? No, but don't you have a coupon? No, no you don't. Anymore. But you did do that. I did do that. Okay, I was gonna say, my gosh, you're making me. A, <laughs> Joe is intentionally trying to make me look bad, but there was a coupon it's book. Twice now. So yes, That's there okay. was a coupon no, book. That's we okay. did. It uh, we did that um, uh, early on uh, on our own, and then we partnered with Cambridge one year to do that. Yeah. We kind of moved away from coupon books. That was that was under uh, my reign of terror. So okay, just a couple uh, we, years yeah, ago, yeah, not yeah. too so long. Yeah, so it's obviously the wrong decision. But um, we uh, we moved away from that partially because um, that was also the time when like Groupon was really oh, strong. Oh yes, and, you know, that's I mean, true. Uh, the the idea of devaluation and discounting can be really harmful to local businesses because it devalues the product and service that they offer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was great and coupons are still around and, and people are still using them, but we kind of migrated away from that. Part of it was also to, we, you know, when we moved from a, uh, 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 myself to Cat, we wanted to right size the programming because we were probably yeah. doing too much. No, so you do too much. No, we were doing too much. We as a, no, a group were doing kidding. too much. Yeah, no, no, no it's all right. Uh, but the book contains the businesses. So, for example, right. Kat, like if you were to get a business membership, then you could, you know, Union Square Donuts. You know, they right. could be in that book if they That's pay right. the membership. That gives you this book, and this book is nice little catalog, and people mm -hmm. can page through it and just say, "Oh, wow, I didn't realize this type of business was available." Yeah, and so it was really it was a really good version of it this year. A lot of really good content too, okay. like not just a, you know sort of like a, a directory and listings, but um, you know the intention of it was to be a guide, right? That's yeah. why we call it a guide, a locals guide a to locals Somerville, guide. right? Yeah, so, so we tried okay. to get some local businesses and leaders to write little things about why they love Somerville and why they located here, yeah. and that was. Um, it was right after Elise Andrews joined our board from yep. Somerville Beat, so we mm -hmm. had a lot of editorial Elise, experience. love Elise. Yeah. Great yeah. blog. So, Great logo. Um, we worked on that, and uh, it's it's a neat book that people can sort of keep and yeah. have a little content. Mm -hmm. so. And so, it's actually one thing too, is mm -hmm. it's really great for like businesses that maintain an office. So I have a lot of friends who are in Cambridge and Somerville who run businesses, and they keep a Cambridge and a Somerville directory in there because they want to know like, all right, we need X, you know, who, what other Who can I go to locally? Exactly. So it actually just pays it forward a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. So now membership, if you want to join Somerville Local First, you can always go, you just go to the website, contact Cat, mm -hmm. and uh, find out more whether you're a business or, you know, just an interested person. You guys have a lot of great events. We'll talk about your main event, Harvest Fest, that's coming up in October. In a, in a moment, I just have a couple of just interesting kind of questions I want to throw at you. You got these ahead of time, so I'm just going to shoot. <laughs> um, one of the things that I am obviously particularly interested in, and I think a lot of people are interested slash anxious about, um, are the development kind of opportunities, but yet what's going to happen? And what I'm interested in is because you guys have theoretically the you know pulse of local businesses, what they're feeling, how are they, how are they planning to brace for this? I mean, what is the overall feeling that local businesses are expressing to you, and is there anything that your organization is doing to say counter the potential impacts of what we might be seeing in the next 10 years? Sure, so I mean, I think in terms of what we've been doing is just trying to make sure that business owners know what's happening, particularly located in hot development areas like Union Square. So we've been doing a lot of information dissemination to make sure that 
folks know that there are meetings happening and that they should attend them and that they should make their voices heard. Um, we've had, we have a Union Square lunch that we've done in the past. And so we have the city come down and talk about zoning changes, particularly for um, some of the manufacturing and fabrication businesses were a little concerned. Mm -hmm. Um, so we try to have a pretty consistent dialogue and be a go-between whenever we can. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just, you know, that's sort of our job. And I, I feel like with all of these things that are happening, it's really the job of the other residents to, to support the businesses when they can. And mm -hmm. just, you know, to remember to always, you know, when there is a local alternative to try to do that. Because it's really important and that's, um, you know, to make yeah. sure that you visit Ricky's or visit one of our local businesses. And it impacts your money, like your money goes so much further with just, you know, buying the flowers at Ricky's or at some other place, you know, that's yeah. local mm -hmm. versus somewhere else. Yeah, no, that's really true. Does. I mean, even when you think about it, you know, like I'm a parent and you think about just making these purchases, it's going to help our schools, it's going to help our roads, it's going to make everything safer and a better mm -hmm. place to live. So, you know, and, and you really sort of have to think about like the overall impact of you know, not just that part, but also making the community a really interesting place to live. And that's why we came here in the first place, because mm -hmm. it's such a cool yeah. place and that's what keeps it cool. But how do you handle the raising of the rents? For example, Davis Square, I know in particular, you know, Johnny D's, a lot of them got hit really hard um, and some of them chose to move um, because of that. And I'm just curious, you know, I, I think it's wonderful to hear that the city is, is involved because I do believe that the city, um, with their uh, community outreach effort with the Master Developer Union Square, for example, really does care about that local quirky flavor that you're, you're describing and that you guys help create and maintain. But, I mean, as far as the rents go, I mean, that's one of those things. Like, what, what, is there anything that can be done there? I know you're not experts yeah. on, like, rent control, <laughs> so I, I don't want to take this episode where it shouldn't go. But, um, sure. but what do you think? Well, I mean, I, I, you know, as I was mentioning to Kat, and I don't know if this would have worked or not, but I, you know, the one thing that I've started to tell people a little bit is if I could do anything differently in the formation of this organization, we would have worked on property ownership well, well, well in advance of what's happening right now, like five, six, seven years ago. You mean encouraging people to encouraging buy the, their property? Encouraging the businesses who are located yeah. in the building to buy their building. Because what ends up happening is, um, you know, even if it, you have a, I mean, there's, a variety of scales of landlords, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 even the most uh, uh, invested in community landlord is going to get the market rate or yeah. something close to it. Um, you know, they might take a little bit less, but they're not they're not in, in, you know in a charity, right? Like they're yeah. they're they're running a business. So, uh, and then you have another side and, and another side of the spectrum where there, there's very little consideration for community, maybe yeah. because they're not here or they're mm -hmm. you know it's just not that important to them. Um, so the the issue really is that as far as Union Square goes, like that ship has sailed. Like there's nothing that you yeah. know. I mean, it, it, you have to. You're playing a different game now because of the valuation of the property and mm -hmm. the development and all this other stuff. So, um, I, I I really do think the best thing that we as an organization can do is try and help these businesses be as successful as we can, and try yeah. and get the residents to understand that like if you want them here, you need to you know you need to be there. You yeah. know, if they like if the if the uh, decision is well it's like three minutes more convenient for me just to go to Target or go to a yeah. big box or go buy online and not buy from the local business that's in my community you know in three years when they're not there don't complain about it because you you know I mean you True. led to that right it's your behavior that ultimately affects their revenues and allows them to stay or not but there are some for example um, I was happy to see that Sessa's, well, I wasn't happy to see that it was closing, okay? But I was happy to see that there was, uh, Sessa's is in Davis Square, uh, Italian, um, I, love, I love the shop, but they're basically switching ownership. After 35 years, they've been there, and they're sw switching shop to Pe Pepe Boca, I think is the name of it. But it's another Italian, you know, it's kind of like a handed down business. Um, but, you know, for example, that's an example where I know that they're busy, but they're, you know, they're just, they've been there for so long. So, I mean, I mean, right. those are the ones that, mm -hmm. I, there's a lot of businesses that are popping up um, in the last, say, 10 years, and they're just as important, don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. I really feel that one of the, yeah. the concerns I have is the flavor of Somerville going out with, you know, these people that have been here mm -hmm. 35, 40 years, but, you know, I guess we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, change happens regardless. No, right? no, no, you're absolutely right. I, I'm, I'm an embrace of change. So let's talk about Harvest Fest. Harvest Fest is one of my favorite events. Mine too. And October 18th, it's gonna be at the Arts at the Armory 
it is, well, why don't you just share a little bit? There's two sessions. Tickets still available? Yes, mm -hmm. tickets are still available. Okay. We have both the regular and the VIP level when you get the a special VIP. tasting glass. This year's VIP ticket is amazing. We have a full size bag of Skidler Confections Caramels. We have different gift certificates to local businesses. Um, I heard there might be a Cuisine and Locale taco gift certificate. Oh my God, they have great tacos. Yeah, very good tacos. So it's definitely worth it. So the VIP tickets are about $50. Regular admission is 35 35 and there's two sessions. Mm -hmm. So on Saturday, if you want to drink early or later, or I guess you don't have to drink. You don't have to drink, but I mean, no. you know, there's a lot of really great local breweries, as we all know. Yeah. Take advantage of that, folks. You're feeding the local economy, and you're enjoying some nice beverages. So from well, and I would also I would also say too. I mean, this is this is a key sort of uh, pillar of our annual fundraising. So yeah. it's a really important event for us as an organization to raise necessary funds to keep the lights on and make sure the cat has a job and gets paid and all these important things. Um, not that we rely completely on that, but. Um, I would also say, Kayan, that um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's, uh, we started, this is the sixth annual, right? So we've been doing this for six years. And in that time, from the time that we started to the time like, uh, that we'll have our sixth annual, there's been a proliferation in beer festivals, right? Like a they, they, proliferation, yeah, I agree I mean, with that. You know, there's, a, there's a, maybe even a little bit of market fatigue, right? There's too many of these things, maybe not. But, um, <laughs> but we do it a little differently. And I, okay. I think what's cool about Harvest Fest is um, there's a, a very much community spirit to it, and I it's agree. a small capacity. So a lot of times you see like six, eight, nine hundred people attend these things. Ours are about three hundred, so it's a much more intimate feel, and we focus a lot more on food. So we'll have was it ten or eight something eight like that, eight, eight to ten restaurants from Somerville offering basically a meal when you piece all the small bites together. Um, uh, over the course of each three-hour session. So like you can come and have lunch mm -hmm. and then sample a bunch of great breweries and, and, a, and a cidery um, or come and have dinner and get to see a band or, and or a DJ and get to see a bunch of people that you know um, and get to support us. So Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's a win-win. But the set, okay, so let's just to be clear so people are aware. Session one is from two to five. Yep. Yeah. Session two is from six to nine. That's the rowdy session. I always it go. Is. I always went to the early one, and then all of a sudden, I, I I was leaving, and I saw these other people come in. I'm like, wow, this seems like a rowdier crowd. So depending on what your flavor, yeah, um, you I would say you know a little bit, a little bit, a little bit sexier in the evening <laughs> session for sure. Yeah. A little sexier. Yeah. Well, you can go yeah. to your website www.somervillelocalfirst.org. No dot after Somerville. Somerville local first. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's a typo on my part. Well, that's strike number three, Joe. But anyway, <laughs> www.summervillelocalfirst.org. You can find out all the um, all the people that are going to be there. Who are your main sponsors? Very nice. I like mm -hmm. the teacup. That's very nice. Uh, who is the main sponsor? Who are your main sponsors for so the our event? Our main sponsors are Eastern Bank and also Community Credit Union. Okay. They're the new credit union opening in Davis this yeah. year. Yep. Um, a lot of credit unions open. There's a lot of local banks opening recently. I feel mm -hmm. like in Union State, there's one down here as well. Yeah, yeah it's we're, a trend. As a state, we're doing. We've actually lost like 25 percent of our local community banks in the last decade, but we're really? still well ahead of what's going on in the rest oh, of the country. Oh, that's good here. Yeah. Since we're talking Davis Square, we've got about five more minutes, and we'll t we can you mm -hmm. know talk a little bit. Give you guys a little bit of time to talk about Harvest Fest and some local first. But Roach, is it Roach? Ro Roach. Roach Brothers. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? What are? What, let's discuss. You know, that was my first job. No. I was a bagger at the Westwood store when I was 14 years old. Oh, my yeah. God. Okay. A yeah. yeah. little nostalgia for yeah, you. Yeah, a little nostalgia. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day. When are they coming? They are coming. I, I don't know uh, what okay. the details are. I don't know exactly. Are, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just saw some Facebook updates. Um, but, you know, I mean, they're a family-owned business. I know that their price points, I think, are a little bit high yes, in they the are. grocery mm -hmm. world. Um, but the service and the quality is supposedly pretty good. Okay. Um, and, you know, independent uh, business that's yeah. family-owned and, yes. you know, Massachusetts only. So, um, And in a great location that, honestly, has been vacant for so long. I'm yeah. happy to see that go there, mm -hmm. then Beer Works. And I'm sorry, all you Beer Works fans, I just feel like yeah. I was go happy to that yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> okay, let's talk. Kick-ass cupcakes. I was saddened to see them go. I, I mm. mean, they just kind of vanished. I mean, and obviously you don't have to divulge anything, but I just, so they just, let, they. I actually don't know the story. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Because they, they were in their original location, then they moved down by the armory, and then yeah. they just kind of poof. And then in the same month, M3. Yeah. That was crazy. Mm -hmm. M3 apparently didn't pay their rent for 16 months or something like that, which, really incredible food and I just had a burger there I had the 
the, they had the best burgers and I had my last burger there and then they're gone. Mm. So I'm just curious if you don't know anything about in terms of um, anything moving into that, because there's a lot of vacancies in that over where when pigs fly. No? Right. No, I haven't heard anything about anything. Okay. Yeah, well, it seems like the Davis Square area, the vacancies are always kind of like, there's a little bit of vacancy and then it just kind of pops up. Mm -hmm. One of the yogurt places went, just, there's three yogurt places. I think it's, it's a lot of yogurt. Yeah, the whole yeah. yogurt thing went. A lot went. of yogurt, yeah. So right. I'm definitely, yeah, I'm definitely a fan of, um, I mean, I don't want things to change over too much, but it's nice to see, you know, kind of fresh businesses. Yeah. Do you think the city is supportive of the smaller business community in terms of getting its you know, kind of foot in the door? I think that they're taking a lot of steps to be, okay. to make things a lot easier to open a business. There's been a lot of feedback recently about how hard permitting can be. I've heard that and I didn't want to like yeah. talk, yeah. you know, badly, but I, I understand that the permitting process can be an absolute bear. Well, I know that they're totally revamping it. To they are. To make it easier. And That's there's great. a way you can track online and see what's mm -hmm. happened so your permits don't kind of go into the abyss. And they're pretty, um, open to feedback and they really want to know how people are liking it and we're actually using it for the first time to get some of our Harvest Fest permits. So, really? Mm -hmm. um, now, how, so we'll okay, so the question, so they just go to the city's website and they can find you out can about the, the city's permit. website. I think it has some more stuff about the permits and they also have a new small business specialist who's just been really fantastic. And what's their name? His first name is Max and it's a little okay. late for me right now so I'm That's okay. I'm <laughs> forgetting <laughs> last names. After 7 p.m. I'm just sort of Ether, Small business he's expert. Really wonderful. He's also on the website. Um, and on the Somerville local first website, no, or on the, on the city, city website. website. The city so for the yeah. local business owners, if mm -hmm. you want to start your own business and you're a little intimidated, get in contact with Cat or go on to the city website and check out you know all the different mm -hmm. kits and things that they have to, to yeah, facilitate that. To make it a lot easier. You know what I love that they're doing? This is my soapbox. I love outdoor seating. The outdoor seating just enlivens the street. I, I mean, I don't know, they're doing something at Magoon Square. Uh, maybe it's just Oktoberfest, because you know, when in Rome, it's like time to drink beer. But uh, I love the outdoor seating. I just think it is really made thing. And, and granted, I would assume that there's things for, you know, um, making sure that people are quiet and respectful, because unfortunately not everyone was that way, but hopefully the Somerville neighbors are. So kudos to the city for making that happen. Mm -hmm. um, so we only have a couple minutes left, so I'm wondering if maybe you guys, you know, Encouraging again all the people home. You guys have Facebook page, uh, Twitter at local one st. So at local first, 3,800 followers. Very popular group. So check out Facebook, Twitter, and you know maybe just talk a little bit, a couple minutes about in terms of what's the takeaway from tonight. Obviously go to Harvest Fest, but you know why is Summer of a Local First so important as an organization for our community? I don't know. I'm going to be a little lazy and let Joe handle that because he's sure. Yeah, 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 I can do that. Um, <laughs> So we didn't really go into the details, but uh, I'll do it now.